Look on your top of your head. There's my glass. Anybody else ever happened to them? They ain't been there, but that's good. We're, we're going to be leaving. That's if anybody wants to think about maybe in the future, whatever, working with our youth. And our, well, actually, our children, but maybe our youth. We go in tomorrow and get, uh, what you call it, background check? Uh, it covers our insurance, our insurance requirement. So if, you ever, if you're thinking about it or whatever, we'll be leaving the church about 8, 10 tomorrow morning, and we're going to uh, the uh, sheriff's department. Uh, what, what, what street is that on? Please wait, what? Right, right. By the courthouse, South Man. We'll, we'll be leaving the church at 8.15 to do that. I think it's very important. But right now, I want to talk about something. Time for the favor of God. Y'all have been faithful. Faithful and faithful. Most people, and I don't find fault with it, but they want to go where everything is handed out for them. So they, they go to a Lord's church and they say, Amen. But you guys are stuck with us. Like I said before, all we have to offer is Jesus Christ. Amen. And that, that's all we have. And that's all I want. Hey, Teresa, I didn't see you. But all, all we have is Jesus. But what else do we need? What else do we need? Well, one thing we do need is love. To love one another. Don't find fault with one another. But let's love each other. Amen. Psalm 102, 1 and 2, then 11 through 17. Psalm 102, 102, verses 1 and 2 to start. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thy ear unto me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. Then verse 11 through 16, But my days are like a shadow that declineth, and I am withered like grass. But thou, Lord, shall endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Verse 13, this is the key verse. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones in favor of the dust thereof. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth shall the earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. Zion is Israel. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we grafted in to Zion. That's our salvation through Jesus. But time for the favor of God. And I believe for each one of us here, for some we've been waiting longer than others. But I believe right now, in the midst of everything that's going on in the world, we could be on the verge of World War III in a matter of a second. We have our Navy ships being... A uh, 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 rocket sent after them and, and turns they bombed uh, 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 whatever uh, radar site or whatever. We could be in, in a World War III quick. Make no mistake about it. But as believers, we have the promise of God. He says He'll never leave nor forsake us. He says His love is everlasting. No matter what goes on in the world, and there's a lot of bad things going on, and it's taking place here as well. Jesus will never leave nor forsake us. And it's very important. I believe that the set time has come for the favor of God to start. For too many, their lives are empty. For too many, there is constantly searching for a meaning in life and never finding it. For too many, they are searching for tomorrow to find the answers for today. You can't find your answers for today and tomorrow. Tomorrow is always the future. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, and I love this verse, it says, to everything there is a season, 
and a time to every purpose under heaven. Each one of us has a season. Our seasons might be different, but each one of us are living right now in a season. We're told that there is a season and a time to every purpose. Well, I believe that the set time has come. <laughs> Let us try and find out what that means to each of us and how it can affect our physical and our spiritual lives. A lot of times our physical elements, elements, not elements, but elements, can come directly from our spiritual side. And that's a big amen. But we need the favor of God and we need the increase of God. Can I have an amen on that? Amen. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3, 1, a season and a time. Let's speak on that for just a second or two. A season is the division of the year. A peculiar period of the, that year, of the year. But one thing I want you to know, whatever season you might find yourself in, God is right there with you. Amen. God's Word will not lie. Many people will lie for whatever reasons. But God's Word will never lie. When God says something, grab a hold of it and don't let Satan try to take it away from you. He's a thief. He's a robber. And he'll attack you in ways. He'll find your weakness. It might not be you. It might be your loved one. Your children or whatever. But he will attack your grandchildren or whatever. But he'll find your weakness and he'll attack you. Don't say what you can do, but rather say what you can do through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says our weakness becomes our strength. Because in our weakness, we search and seek for God. In our strength, we go about doing whatever we're doing. And after a process of time, our prayer life becomes less and less. Our church life becomes less and less and less. Your strength is in your weakness. Whatever your weakness is, start praising God for it. Because then, then you're depending upon Jesus Christ to bring you through. And that's so important today. That's so important today. So important today. We need the power of God in our lives. We need more of God. And I say this, there's no one that has all of God. It's a growing process day by day. Day by day, each one of us should be getting closer to God. Amen. We should be learning more about God. The only way we're going to know everything about God is when we stand in, well, whatever we do, bow, I don't, I'm not planning on standing in the presence of my Creator. But when I'm in the presence of my Creator, that's when everything will be revealed to me. I need to learn day by day. Can I have an amen on that? Amen. Each one of us needs to live day by day. You might find yourself in a dry season. Then I say this, learn all that you can in that season. Because that season won't last for eternity. It's only for a short amount of time, ever how long that might be. Because you can use, you can use what you learned in that season when you get into another season of your life. Life is a learning experience. What to do, what not to do. When I was a youngster, I did what youngsters did, and I'm not proud of it, but Jesus forgave me. I'm old now, but I'm old as God wants me to be. When God says it's finished, He's going to bring me on home, and it's going to be a great time. But He's not finished yet. We have work to do right here. We need to share Jesus Christ with as many people as we can. We need to say there's a way out. How many here has ever been addicted to something? I want to talk about that for a second. We have a pretty good amount. I'm no different. I'm a human being created by God in His image. But I need the power of God in my life to be an overcomer. 
when someone is addicted to something, and this is basically what I've learned over the last 35 years, they find themselves doing something they don't want to do. Somebody will say, well, you have the power of God. You did, amen and amen and amen. But we need to go further than that. Let me share what addiction will do to you. Addiction is like this. That's somebody that has both of their arms out like that. A rope is tied to each wrist. And they turn it tied to a mule. A mule is a pretty strong animal. And that addiction is so strong. You don't want to do it, but you've got a pull that wants you to do it. And it's literally pulling you apart. Amen. It's pulling you apart. And we have Christian leaders that has addictions. We have people that sits in the pew that has addictions. We have choir people that has addictions. Addiction is not only limited to a few. Addiction is the power of God working. And we have the power of Jesus Christ. But for many, they need to know how to break that addiction. And let me put it to you like this. It's like we need it. Everybody here might we need to do something. I don't know. But if you get out there, especially out here in the churchyard, you get out here and you're weedy during the summer, give it a week or two and it's coming back. That's what addiction does to people. That's what addiction does to Christians. That's the power of Satan. And they have to know how to break it. Come on. It's easy to say, I pray for you and this and this. But until you have walked in their shoes, you do not know what they're going through. They don't need your advice. What they need is your love and your understanding to help them break it. Amen. 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 Too many times churches become judgmental instead of being right there to help them. Not to be a part of it, but to be right there to help them. We need to help. As long as there's breath, we need to share the love of Jesus Christ. I'm getting on my high horse now. But I believe it. I know how to break it. And I want to share that. I know how to break it. When someone finds themselves doing something, well, I'm not going to get to that. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> we need to get on down the road. We need to grow on what the past has brought us to, to today. I believe that. Build upon what God has done for you in different seasons of your life. Amen. I know I have built. And there's others here that's built. And this is so important, people. So important. The Word of God reveals to us that God shall arise. Verse 13 of Psalm 103. Thou shalt arise and have mercy. How many here wants God's mercy? How many here needs God's mercy? Amen. I've got to have God's mercy. Lord. I can't make it another day without God's mercy. Lord. Have you ever seen someone walk, wake up and might have been you at one time? You, when you woke up, you had so much hatred in your heart. Uh, you're just waiting for somebody to say something you don't like so you can lash out at them. you got to prove to others that you're better than them. Well, God says He will arise. And when we have the presence of God in our life, when we wake up, we're going to be joyful. I think of the three, the three children. Remember the three ch Hebrew children that was cast in the fiery furnace? They said, God, you can deliver us, but if not, I'm going to paraphrase it, it's okay. We're, we're, we're not going to bow down to, to, to the king for no reason at all. We bow down to Jesus Christ. And if, and if you want to throw us in that fiery furnace, go ahead. We're ready to go. Amen? Because the future, when I'm dead, my future is a whole lot better and brighter than my future right now. And they threw him in a fiery furnace. How many people want to be with Jesus? To see Jesus? Amen. All right, they threw him in a fiery furnace. And guess what? It wasn't three anymore. It was four. Amen. Jesus was in the midst of that trial, that tribulation that so many of us dread. But when we are children of God, He is right there with us through whatever we might Amen. be going through. Amen. 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 
Just with what is going that, that, that what is going to take place in our lives when God arises. God arose. They put Jesus on the cross. Satan was having a good time. I'm sure they I'm sure they were somewhere. I don't know what they were doing. I'm sure they were somewhere shouting, hey, we got him. We got him now. They're going to worship me now. They're going to worship us. They're going to worship us because we conquered Jesus. We conquered him. We conquered him. We got him. Oh, I was aiming for a surprise. Amen. <laughs> oh, they were in for a surprise. Jesus arose from the grave. And had victory over them. But they still haven't given up. They're still trying to destroy believers. They are still trying to destroy churches. Who's the father of all lies? Satan is the father of all lies. What happens if you take a little lie and you put it in a whole lot of truth? You got you got a partial truth. You got a partial truth. It's almost like this, and I said this many times over the years. Take a Coca-Cola and take just take about that much out. Then take that much strychnine and put it there and drink it. How many years gonna do that? You're not gonna do it because it's foolish. That's what a lie is. They'll take a truth and put just a little lie in it, and that lie is going to corrupt that truth. You know, with me on that? That's what Satan's trying to do right now. He's trying to do it in our churches. He's trying, he trying to destroy the churches. If he destroys the churches, he's won. But I got news for him. The church is victorious. Amen. Nothing that comes against a true church that has Jesus Christ first, his word first, they teach and preach salvation through the blood of Jesus. Nothing, nothing will destroy God's church. Amen. 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 That, that's the truth. Praise God. But this, God shall arise and God will have mercy upon us. Amen. For the time to find favor, back to verse 13. We need favor right now. Each one of us needs favor. You need favor. You need favor. Favor carries with it the meaning to pitch a tent, tent and to encamp around it. I need angels encamped around me. That might be why I'm not afraid to go places. If God told me to go, He's going to encamp around me. He's not going to let me go by myself. He's going to go with me. I can tell you tales about that when I was in New Orleans working for Thomas Picking Him, but we won't go through that tonight, today. But I want God to surround me as I go to and fro. Amen. 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 Lord. Praise to God. Lord. The set time has come. I believe right now, from the bottom of my heart, the set time has come right now. The psalmist says, Hear my prayer, O Lord. How many of us have been praying a while for something? Anybody here that... I've been praying for a while. Like Mike said, God brought us up here for a reason and a purpose. And each one of y'all are here for a reason and a purpose too. That's to share the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't believe in looking at people and finding fault with them. I believe in looking at people and let them see a smile and let them see something with them that they want. And all I can share is Jesus Christ. Y'all don't know the phone calls I get of the people that we talk to. In my office and a lot of times at McDonald's or wherever with Mickey. A lot of things I can't share, nor will I share. Only three people need to know about it. Me and the person that shared it in God. There's a lot of pain. A lot of pain. But hear my prayer, O oh Lord. I prayed for a long time. 
And I do believe we're in it right now. For those who are willing to receive, like our brother shared here just a moment ago, a few moments ago. If you're ready to receive, you're going to receive the blessings of God. Just like dry branch that's burnt, that's turned brown. If God opens up the heavens and pour out a deluge of water, rain, it what is going to happen? It's going to break the soil and carry the soil away. But when God opens up the kingdom of heaven and allows a slight drizzle to come down, it's going to water. It's not going to destroy, but it's going to give life-giving water. What we need right now, the Father's house, what the Father's house needs right now, and I believe we're in it, is the heavens to open up and a light drizzle come down and start just watering our souls, watering our spirits, and we're going to see ourselves starting to grow. Grow. How do you get plus green grass? You water it. You water it and you water it. And I believe God is opening up the kingdom of heaven right now for us, for those who are willing to receive it. For those who think they have their systems full, well, one day their systems will be dry. But I believe this, that God right now for us, right now, He's opened up the kingdom of heaven and a light drizzle is coming down. Amen. Now here can receive that. Amen. Amen. I believe that. I believe it. Me and Inez is in that season. We're in it right now. Praise the Lord. Isn't it good? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe that we are in a season of favor and increase. Favor and increase. The fields are ripe. It's time to harvest. The barns of your heart will be filled with what you harvest today. And remember this, you can only harvest what you have planted. You, that's the law of the harvest. You can't harvest something you haven't planted. You plant love, guess what you're going to receive? Remember this, my dad was a farmer that we moved to Jefferson Parish. My dad was a farmer, but when you plant a seed, this is very important for us. The Bible talks about this too. It's very important to realize something now. We plant a seed, we plant a bunch of seeds, but what's going to grow alongside of that seed when that seed starts to grow? Weeds. Weeds. And if those weeds are not taken care of, the weeds are going to smother the seed that you planted. My dad planted, back then everything was basically done by hand, but my dad had to get a hole. And what did he do with that hole? The weeds growing with the plant, he had to hold it because it took a little while for that seed to grow enough to where the weeds couldn't mark. Can we receive that this morning? Amen. We need to keep praying. We need to keep seeking the face of God. Amen. We need to start saying, God, God, we love you. We care for you. We believe your promises. Amen. We believe your promises. We believe your promises. Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. God bless y'all.